In today's show, we're going to talk about the Power Apps with function. We're going to look at how to use this function to make your code writing easier and a little bit more efficient and just generally make your lives a little better. So not a very complicated video today, but this is one of those functions you should add to your tool belt because if nothing else, we're going to use it to make performance better and that's something we really care about. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to talk about the with function. All right, and this is one of those ones where I'm way more excited than I should be because, you know, we're going to look at the with function. It's very simple form, which we're like, eh, not a big deal. But looking at my own code and the things I've done in the past that I did not like and the ways that the with function is going to let us overcome these, they're pretty exciting. So with this particular video, right, if you're like, hey, the beginning is really boring, can I know all this stuff? I get that. But the second half, we're going to talk about how I'm going to use this to make better performance. That's the stuff you're after probably. So, but either way, let's just switch over to my desktop and dive right in. Okay, so over here on the desktop, we're going to just do a label on the screen and start kind of playing with this thing, right? Make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. So what we want to do with this particular uh, with function is the idea is that we can pass a record or a variable, we can pass some values into another function so we don't have to keep going and calculating those or looking them up all the time. So in its most simple form, you would do something like this. You'd say with, and then you're going to, because we're making a record, it's always going to be curly braces, right? So we're going to hold down the shift key so we can kind of make our curly braces like that. And so inside of here, we're just going to do something simple. We're going to be like dog, and we're just going to set it to be chewy, just like that. And so just like that, that is establishing a record, right? You'll notice it's very similar to the uh, context variable way of looking for things, right? That's how you make a record. And you can see that Power Apps is telling me that's a record. So now we do a comma. And so then this is the normal portion. In our case, this is for a uh, label. So we might just say something like, you know, the name of the dog is, and we can do a little closer parentheses, do an ampersand and concatenate, and then it auto suggests for us dog that knows that, that is within the scope of where we're at, like that. And then just like this, the name of the dog is Chewy. Because the idea is that we've put dog in here, um, you know, and then we've made it available through this record. If we wanted to have multiple, right, we could say, you know, comma, and we could do the kid, and we could be like, is Billy Goat? Ha, <laughs> you thought I was going to do one of my kids. No. Nope. Right, so then we just write the, dog, the name of the dog is this, and the goat is, and then we can just do ampersand if I ever find it, and then kid, boom. And so then, right, we've just built a string. So not really complicated, but I need you to kind of, right, we gotta walk before we can run. And so we wanted to make sure we understood that this in its most simple form is how we're going to do this. All uh, right, we're taking with, boom, 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 and we're using it in a label. Now, we're using this here in a label. This could be part of a patch function or part of a lookup or a filter or some other crazy function that you come up with, right? So we're using it here with labels because it's real easy to see the output and understand what's going on. But just remember, you can use this with any of the other functions. So now we've kind of seen in a most simple form, that is how we're going to do it. So let's go to the next step. And so the next step, down here, you can see I went ahead and just made some inputs, right? So just a text input and its default value is 12. And then this text input is, is six, right? And so this one's named text input one, and this is one underscore one, I copied them. So what we could do, we could come up back up here, right? We're just gonna use our label again, but we could be like, hey, so with, do our curly braces again, and we're just gonna say uh, HW for hours worked is going to be what? Text input one dot text now and we want to use that as a number though so we're going to put that inside the value function and so then we're going to have uh, that was hours worked and then we'll just do wage here to avoid confusion I shouldn't have made the name so similar so we'll do value and so then this is text input one one dot text like that all right, so same concept. Only thing we did here, instead of hard coding the values, now we're getting them out of inputs, so they'll update dynamically. And then what do we do? We're gonna do a comma again. And so then because we're still inside of a um, label, we're just gonna have some text, right? And we'll just be like, you know, hours 
worked, were boom, and then we'll do that, and then we'll do that, and we'll do our HW, something like that. Oh, and then we'll do an ampersand, and then we'll do a space again, then we'll be like uh, for wage of boom, boom, and then this will be wage. And so there you go. We're now making this. But remember, width is dynamic. So instead of having to worry about changing any of these properties, right, if we go in here and change the hourly wage to be eight, it's just automatically updating, right, right away, 13 and eight, boom. So that's pretty nice that it's being updated. We can also then use these in here. And so we could be like, uh, and, and then we could do like for a total of, and then we could be, we could just say, you know, we want HW times, oh, times wage, oh, and HW, right? It's gotta be capitalized correctly, so I should do that, boom. And so then there it's, it's calculating those on the fly. So, because we have full access to those variables, those numbers that we've done. So that's one pass, right? And where I'm really thinking about this, right? Cause this is a really simple example, but a lot of times I have to write really long HTML emails for customers and I gotta pull different fields in and values and I gotta reuse them. And you know, having to put this type of thing in my code, value, text, input, one text, pain in the rear, whereas if I could put HW and make it something that was more meaningful than HW, kind of like I did with wage over here, that's going to make a better experience. Okay, but let's go one more step further with this. There's like seven more steps we're gonna go, but let's go to the next step. So you can also take and put these inside of each other, so, or not inside, but you can build. So this was our first width, and so it's outputting this record. Over here it says, what's the formula? Well, there's nothing stopping us from just having another width to be in our formula. And so then we would kind of do a record again, close our comma, and then we need another closing thing here. And we'll do format text, it's a little easier to read. Pull this down. All right, so with HW and wage, and then with nothing, and then we're doing it. But so say we wanted to compute their earnings ahead of time, right? So we don't want to compute inside our, code, right? So we can just say earnings and we can reference it here. So as long as there's no conflict, we do HW times wage. So then now, right, because there's no conflict, we have access to all three of these widths, but we had to go into the second width because I want to use the first widths outputs. Width is a hard word for me to say apparently. And so then now we can go right here and we could change this to be earnings. There it is, auto suggested. And so we've got the same output, right, with a total of 80, but you can see here that now we've kind of stacked these upon each other and we've made it so they're pretty easy to, to read, right? We come in here, be real efficient, like uh, Greg was in his blog post, but like this is hourly wage, right? Put, and these are just little code comments if you haven't seen those before. This is, or wait, that was hours worked. I really should have named that HW, right? And we agree that was a terrible idea. I Me, mean, I do. Hours worked, and then this is the wage, right? And then this is, calculated earnings. Boom. But so the idea is that by getting all these declared ahead of time, we're able to, um, you know, make this a lot easier to read instead of it saying value text input one text. And I don't, once again, in these big emails that I'm writing for customers or these PDFs that I'm generating, I'm, my code today is a hot train wreck mess. So if I could just come up here at the top in the beginning and say with and pass all these in here with nice friendly names, then that would make my life a lot easier. So just something for you guys to kind of think about and use in here. But when it comes to like simple text inputs like this, eh, you know, you can you probably think of seven other ways to do this. I, I, I know I can, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you this so I can show you more complicated, right? Coming up here in just a moment. And then from there, we're gonna look at the super stuff that is the part of it that actually gets me excited. So let's just go to the next piece. Right? This was straightforward, you now know how to use the with function. So let's go look at how I used it the first time. So over here, I have a gallery that is connected to a SharePoint list called employees. You've, if you've watched any of my videos, you've seen this list of data several times. And so then what I'm doing is over here on the right, basically every time you, you, know, you select an employee, let's just play the app. So if I click on um, Greg here, you're gonna see that it's like, all right, employee details. So full name is Greg, Peter, right? His department is finance. That is not true. And his de uh, department manager is finance Fred. So in his record, right, in his actual employee record, I am storing, if I can ever click on it, the department. Okay, so I have that available. 
but the uh, department manager is actually kept in a separate list. So here's the way I used to write that type of code. All right, so I would say, all right, department manager equals, and then I would go do a lookup to go get the uh, manager's name, right? So lookup from departments where the title equals the department from the record. If that was blank, then I would put in unknown because I don't always have department managers. If it's not blank, then I was actually going to provide you with, um, you know, do the lookup again to get the manager so that it would show you that, that for Greg, it's Finance Fred. I hated this code every time I wrote it. And it's, I've got it in dozens of apps because why? I'm making two calls to my data source, right? I'm doing a lookup to see if the value exists and if it, right, to check to see if that value is out there and if it's blank or not. And if it's not blank, then I'm doing the same lookup again to get the same field back so I can show the field. Blech. Watch how width makes this so much better. Let's go down here. So what we did here is I said, all right, department manager, and then I did width, and I did the lookup. So I went and fetched that whole record, and that was my width, right? Because width returns a record, so notice my curly brackets aren't there because I just needed to go get the record, and lookup returns a record. So then I said, if is blank manager, right? That is the manager property of that record we just returned. If that's blank, then put in unknown. If not, then show the manager. That's it. That is so easy and clean. Look at how much cleaner, right? This code and, or formula, not code, and this one do the same thing. That's a hot mess. I can barely keep up with what that does. This one, makes a lot more sense. So pretty excited about that possibility, right? So I just made my app more efficient by making those little small changes. So then let's take that another step further. And so here is um, a button that I wrote. And so in this case, what I wanted to do is I wanted to check to see if Greg, if a, there was a record with the first name of Greg, if that record existed, then I'm going to uh, or sorry, if that record doesn't exist, so it comes back blank, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to patch, and I'm gonna patch that list, default employees, that means create a new record, so I'm gonna create a new record, and set the title to dork and the first name to Greg. If that record came back with a value, so I went and did a lookup for a record where the first name equals Greg, if that came back with a value, then instead what I wanna do is patch employees and I would go do that same look up again, boo, and then do the title edit is dork. Okay, so that code works. This is very common, right? Check to see if the record exists. If it exists, update it. If not, create a new one. That's the concept there, but terribly inefficient. So what does this one do? Same thing, but now what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of the ability to load that record. Now notice here this time I used curly braces. So this is a little bit different than probably what you were expecting. But the thing that you have to keep in mind is you can't reference the record, right? So remember up here when we did this one, right? The, I loaded the record. The record was here and I could reference the fields. I referenced manager, but I couldn't reference the whole record at once. I couldn't say here's the record. I can only say here's a piece of the record. So what I'm doing in this code, this is where we got super advanced for us, is we're going to take that record and we're going to store it in the value of record, right? So we've got a record with a record object inside of it. Don't overthink it. But now that I've got this record with a record inside of it, now I can say if is blank record.id, patch employees, default employees, title, dork, blah, blah, blah. If not, patch employees, and instead of doing the lookup again, I can do the record, right? I, I can't put the, uh, there, there's no way to specify the current record in the width, right? There's no way to call it. So what you have to do is you have to assign it to a record. So that's how I was able to write this code so nice and clean. All right, kind of format text, man, make it easier to see. But that's a, one of those things, right? This, this, this took me a little prodding to get there, right? Greg had to kind of, you know, walk me to this one. But that's why I want to just cut you guys straight to the chase and be like, hey, if you want to put records in here, I think what my standard's going to be is going to just always be to make a record named record. So then that way, you know, this code is a little more complicated, right? Instead of just saying ID, it has to say record.id because I want the ID of the record inside the record. But by doing this, 
it has made my life here made this possible. So that's the key. So I think for me, right, if you're one of my consultants watching this, I think this is going to be our standard way for using uh, this particular guy, right? Curly brackets around it, boom, we're off and running. So that is that. And just like that, folks, we now know how to use the width function. Like I said, super jazzed about this. It is going to make your code easier to read, easier to follow, less of this on-chain stuff and carrying around variables that you didn't need before, and less calls to your data sources, which we're always about, right? We're always trying to make our apps a little bit faster. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know, I've got a million more uh, here to check out. You know, you leave me comments if you have questions or other ways you're using with. I always respond to my comments. I'm about a week behind typically, but I always respond. Um, if you need help, right, reach out, Power Apps 911. We've got a new training class launching next week. Shh, I haven't told anybody else. You guys are the first ones to know. Uh, but we are trying to create more, you know, we've got all those great YouTube videos. I don't know, there's like 75 of them at this point. But we're also trying to make more formal type of training available through uh, powerapps911.com slash training. So with all that said, I'm late for a meeting. So thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. If you got a second, click the subscribe button. That always keeps me making more videos. Or if you want to work together, need some help getting your Power Apps going, hit me up at Power Apps 911. Always happy to work together. Or finally, if you're really just looking for more videos, that's probably what it is, check out the Power Apps playlist over here and you know enjoy that. All right, thanks and have a great day.